Psalm number 30, Psalm number 30, and our lesson is taken from uh, the fifth verse, Psalm number 30 and the fifth verse. Now, I don't think any of you will tell me this morning that I've never heard this before. I think everybody that's ever been to church in their life has heard this verse. And you've used it yourself during tough times. And it goes this way. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Now, is there anyone that's never heard that scripture? If you have it, you need to take it, underline it, and use it as your own. Because I'll promise you, if you haven't already... There's going to be a time in your life, your life, and your life when this verse is going to mean more to you, perhaps, other than the words of Jesus himself. But these are the words of Jesus. Going to mean more to you than any passage in the scripture. But I want to read to you. How many of you have NIV versions of the Bible? The New International Version of the Bible? I want to read it in that version now. And listen to these words. This is how it reads, as close as to it reads in the old Jewish Bible. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Now listen to this. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. Now the Jews were experts at word pictures. And as the Holy Spirit uh, infused in them the words that God wanted them to say, they would bring out of their own culture a way of expressing things. And the Jews gave life personification to everything. They could talk about a tree and make it a living person. And it's a living tree, but they could translate that into a person. They could look at a star and somehow in that star see characteristics of a human. In this case, the Jew looks at weeping. Weeping. We all know what weeping is. He looks at weeping and describes it as a visitor that comes in to lodge for the night. I doubt if any of you have had an uninvited guest arrive at evening and uh, invite themselves into your house to spend the night. If you have, don't raise your hand. I guess that happens. And it must have happened with frequency back in the day that this was written. Because the sense of it is that this person called weeping comes to your house, walks in uninvited, uninvited, and stays for the night. But... When the morning comes, Mr. Weeping has to leave. And in comes joy. In comes joy. So weeping might stay for the night, but in the morning, Mr. Rejoicing comes in. This uninvited guest may come into my life for a period of time, but in the morning, he's got to leave. Because Mr. Rejoicing is coming in to take his place. Isn't that a, a great picture that the psalmist brings to us? We see things in contrast here. We see God's anger versus God's favor. We see, God, we see weeping versus rejoicing. We see night set across from morning. 
we see a moment versus a lifetime. You see those things? It's just packed full. And so I'm just going to concentrate on that one verse, if you will, and say that first of all in this text, there is a redemptive application. We can take this idea of this unwanted guest coming into our life and spending the night, but only for a night, and in the morning being replaced by a more pleasant guest called rejoicing. We can apply it to our redemption. And this is how our world, the whole world for 4,000 years was in darkness. For forth from the time that Adam sinned, our world was propelled into darkness. And the Old Testament prophets talk about that over and over, how we're in the dark and we grope as blind men. We feel our way through life and we can't see. And the whole world is in this darkness, not having the light of God to see the way. And that's why when Jesus came as the light, it was the most profound event that this world has or shall ever know. But the world was in darkness for 4,000 years until that event of which Micah prophesies in 4 and 1 when he says, But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. So there it is, a world in darkness. But the morning comes and the sun and that's the Son of God. He arises as the Son and brings light to an otherwise dark world. Joy in the morning at the resurrection of Jesus. It was no coincidence that those ladies came at early dawn and did not find the body of Jesus in the grave because God wanted it that way. When that resurrection was witnessed by those early risers, and they came and they saw the empty tomb, and then encountered the resurrected Christ, that was in the morning. That old crucifixion is at night. We have that darkness covering the entire earth and it's God saying there is darkness over the earth but light comes in the morning but joy comes in the morning and that was the resurrection of God's Son, Jesus Christ. Joy in the morning for you and me. And I love this. For you and me, after a lifetime of darkness, According to Peter in 2 Peter 1.19, after a lifetime of darkness, the day dawns in my life and the morning star, his language, the morning star rises in our hearts. Now I know I was in darkness. I got enough memory to remember my life without God, without Christ, without the Word, without the Holy Spirit. And that is a darkness incomparable with any darkness in the universe. But then something happens. God sends His Spirit. And Peter says, it's the rising of the sun in our hearts. And in actuality, it is the arising of the Son, Jesus Christ, in our hearts. So, joy in the morning has a redemptive application, but there's also a practical application that we can use every day. Now, going back to this night visitor, 
that the psalmist describes. When the night visitor comes unwanted and uninvited, when that hard time comes, when that affliction comes, and our night visits us or the visitor comes to us in the night, the great practical application is he is not there to stay. I'm going to ask you another personal question. I don't want you to raise your hand. But have you ever had a visitor that you just can't wait until they leave? Well, of course you haven't. Only someone like me would have an experience like that. But people do. There are people who come in and, and move in and stay and you, boy, you just look forward to seeing that car leave or that plane take off or that train head on down the tracks or that bus leave the trailway station. Well, there is that visitor. And that visitor is a time of trouble that our psalmist calls weeping. But that visitor is never there to stay. So we do not lose heart. Here's another scripture that fits that so well. We do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Day by day. I like that song, don't you? It means that every day has its dawning. And though things may be tough for a night, we're renewed day by day. And this is what Peter goes on, or Paul goes on to say, this light momentary affliction, this night visitor is only here for a moment preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. So you see that we have that temporariness and we have that foreverness. We were walking out in Wade's cotton field with my little granddaughter and I let her pull uh, a couple handfuls of cotton and she says, well, is, is this what makes our cotton shirts like this? And I said, well, that's what they make cotton shirts out of. And she says, well, could I take this home to my mom and her make a shirt out of it? And I said, no, there's something that has to happen. It has to go to the mill. And the seed needs to be taken out of it. And then when it's gone through the mill, it is prepared almost to be made into twine and, and thread and cloth and shirts and suits and all those other things. But I thought to myself, well, what did I just say? To be useful, that cotton has to go through the mill. And you know what the Bible says? The same thing applies to you and me. To be useful, we have to have this night visitor. But he's only there temporarily, and he serves the purpose of preparing us for the eternal day. And there's another practical application. When the night visitor comes, it's not just a random event. Now, this is the difference between a child of God. That is one in whose life God has put his Holy Spirit and adopted him into the family of God. That's the difference between that person and the unsaved. For the unsaved, things happen randomly. Sometimes they may get the rain, sometimes not get the rain. Sometimes they get the blessing, sometimes not get the blessing. Sometimes they have hard times, and, but they're random events. But for the people of God, that night visitor isn't random. You know what uh, we read in Isaiah 54, 7? Our Lord said, here's that sorry, temporary visitor, for a small moment, for a small moment, who has done this? For a small moment have I afflicted thee, God says. When that night visitor comes, I, the Lord says, I am the one who sends him. 
but with everlasting mercies I will gather thee. So isn't that a great practical thing to know? That when that uninvited darkness comes into my life, that even in that, God has not forgotten me, but is part of it. When the night visitor comes, we always discover that Jesus was there all along. One of the most beautiful pictures in the New Testament for me that illustrates that was when those disciples, Peter and the rest, they had gone through a terrible night. Jesus had been crucified. And now he was gone. And these men are looking back on those last three years. And as far as they know, those three years have gone down the drain. As far as they know, it's all been for nothing. And so you'll excuse Brother Peter if he says, well, that's history. Now I'm going fishing. I'm going to go out and resume my life's work. Now I'll excuse him for that, won't you? But it gets worse. He's with these professional fishermen and he fishes all night long. Not one fish. Now even I have never had a fishing trip like that. And these were professional fishermen. Nothing. All night long. So here it is. Jesus isn't there even though in a real sense he's appeared to them. But where is he? I go fishing. And now we can't even do that. Don't you think there were some tears on that boat? I think those hardened fishermen had some moist eyes that it seemed like nothing was working. Have you ever felt that way? <laughs> Nothing is working right. But here's the beautiful part. That was the night. That was the night visitor. That was the night of affliction. But John writes in the 21st chapter, verse 3, that that night, that night, they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Do you get that picture? Because that picture is drawn for you and me. Weeping may endure for a night. Everything might evade us that has come easy for us all of our lives. And we may see no way out of this. But yet, the morning comes. And guess what? There's Jesus standing on the shore, and he's been there all along. But always the morning. This is the way uh, Jeremiah put it. You know they called him the weeping prophet? And that wasn't without cause. Because Jeremiah in the book of Lamentations is writing a book of weeping. That's what Lamentations are. And they called Jeremiah the weeping prophet. And he saw some terrible things. He saw some insurmountable obstacles that thrown up before his people, his land. And the worship and the personal experience that any Jew should have had with their Lord, he saw that all as a time of darkness and wrote about it in the book of Lamentations. But listen to this. In the middle of that dark night, he remembered that night visitor isn't here to stay. And he wrote this, and you can hang on to this too. He said, he said it this way, the steadfast love of the Lord, and this is in Lamentations 3.22, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. 
They are new every what? Every morning. There it is. So you see, no matter how dark that night, here's the truth that God has never forsaken us even when that old dark visitor in the black of the night comes in and stays with us and makes us miserable. The book of Lamentations in the book of the weeping prophet says the steadfast love of the Lord has never left us. And in the morning we see that. New every morning, great is your faithfulness. And finally, not only that, there's an eternal application to this scripture. Joy in the morning. And what a joyful morning it will be when our Savior comes to claim his bride. Now, the Bible describes the coming of Christ this way. And when I hear this and read this, I am so thankful God, by His grace, made me a part of Him and called me the bride of His Son, Jesus Christ. When Jesus comes again, He comes as the bridegroom to claim His bride. You're mine. I've come for you. You're mine. And I'm taking you away from this darkness. I'm taking you out of the darkness. And now you're going to be mine forever. Joy in the morning. In that resurrection morning when the sun breaks, Jesus Christ lights up the universe and the night visitor must take the leave. And God says, behold, the former things, that night visitor, he's gone. The former things are passed away in Revelation 21. Go away, he says. Night visitor, you're gone. The light, the morning has come, and God will wipe away the tears from their eyes. There will be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are thrown out. That's literally what that means. They've been thrown out of the house. And now, and now, the morning of joy has come. Joy in the morning when all of us of God's family who have lived in darkness for 6,000 years, but yet we've seen the sun rise all of our life. And for 6,000 years, mankind has seen the sun coming up. But he's seen the sun clouded over he has seen the sun low in the sky, going down and dreading the night. But what a morning, joy in the morning, when Jesus takes us to that city, and the Bible says there's no need for sun, nor moon, nor any other celestial light for the Son of God, Jesus Christ is the sun of it. And it shall never eclipse, and it shall never go behind the cloud, for that sun, that light, that rising in the morning is forever. And so we read it this way in that song I dearly love, and I'll just read you the verse I love of it. By and by when the morning comes, there it is, when the saints of God are gathered home. We'll tell the story how we've overcome. We'll understand it better by and by, by and by, when the morning comes. Joy in the morning. May the Lord add his blessing as my prayer for Christ's sake. And amen.